Hello everyone, uh, welcome you all for the seventh session on module 2 which is conformal transformation and complex integration. So here in this module, let us uh, see the second part of the module. So in the previous six sessions, we have seen what is complex integration, how we need to perform types of complex integration and uh, all that stuff. So here in this particular session, we are moving on to the second part of the module which is conformal transformation. So the conformal transformation, so transformation is the main thing here. So what is the transformation? So transformation is nothing but a set of point in one plane is going to map on to the set of points in the other plane. So that is transformation. So in such transformations here in this session in particularly we are going to study about the conformal transformations. So what is a conformal transformation? It is also called as conformal mapping. Okay. So conformal transformation is also called as a conformal mapping. So before we define the conformal transformation, we need to define the transformation first. So transformation uh, where here are going to consider u is equal to u of x comma y and v as a function of x comma y. So if the set of points in the z plane uh, and the w plane are going to trace out a curve and we say a set of points in the z plane has been mapped on to set of points in the w plane and such an uh, transformation is called as the conformal trans that such a uh, mapping is called as the conformal transformation. So uh, such a mapping was called as the transformation and in such a way if it is to be conformal any transformation to say it is unconformal uh, the angle between the transformation which has happened. So for example C1 and C2 are the two uh, curves which we are considering in the Z plane and the same C1 and C2 curves are going to be mapping on to the curve C1 dash and C2 dash in the W plane. If the, uh, between these transformation, if uh, the angle and the magnitude has been preserved, then such a transformation is called as the conformal transformation or it is also called as the conformal mapping. So you can observe the graphs from this graph to this graph, the curve C1 and C2 has been transformed to C1 dash and C2 dash and the angle here is alpha, here also it is alpha. So it has been uh, preserved both in the magnitude and direction, since that is. So next is isogonal. So what is this isogonal is? If the transformation presents, preserves the magnitude at the angle but not necessarily the sense, then the transformation is called as an isogonal. So in transformation there are two types, one is conformal and the other one is isogonal. Uh, if the transformation preserves both the uh, angle and the sense, then it is conformal. If it preserves only the magnitude and not necessarily the uh, sense, then such a transformation is called as an isogonal transformation. So here, uh, let us discuss few conformal transformations. So first one, uh, discuss the transformation W is equal to Z square. So either the question can be asked like this or the same question can be asked like find the images in the W plane corresponding to the straight lines X is equal to 0, Y is equal to B under the transformation W is equal to Z square. So here X is equal to A and y is equal to b under the transformation w is equal to z square and indicate the region with sketches. So this is how the question can be asked. Question can be asked in both the ways. Either this can be the question or this can be the question. So anyway since the transformation is specified you need not worry. So you will be able to get an idea like what transformation has been asked. So now let us start doing it. So firstly consider the given transformation which is w is equal to z square and dw by dz which is equal to 2z. So this uh, we will find only to know where and all the curve becomes, where and all uh, the transformation exists and where and all the transformation does not exist. So here when we find the differentiation 2z and this 2z should not be equal to 0. It means that z should not be equal to. So except at 0 in all other points the transformation exists. That is how we are going to find out uh, at what points the transformation will not exist. So the conformal transformation except at the origin and everywhere it exists. So now consider the given transformation and we know in the, con uh, in the complex analysis uh, uh, the module which we are studying wherever we come across that in Cartesian forms that is x plus i y and w is u plus i v. So we are going to consider the same thing z is x plus i y and the w is u plus i v uh, where we know this u and v are functions of x and y. So uh, using this, uh, uh, using the substitution, we have to segregate the real and imaginary part of the given transformation. So consider W is equal to Z square, W is nothing but U plus IV and Z is nothing but X plus IY the whole square. So let us expand this by using A plus B whole square. 
So a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab. So x square uh, plus i y whole square plus 2 x i y. So i y whole square is nothing but so i y the second term i y whole square is nothing but i square y square. So i square is nothing but minus 1 so we get minus y. So totally when I expand this x plus i y whole square we get x square minus y square uh, plus 2i into xy. So this we can segregate the real and imaginary part because this is equal to u plus iv. So we can take uh, the entire uh, real part as u and imaginary part as v. So that is what we have done. u is equal to x square minus y square and v is equal to 2xy. Call them as equation 1 and 2. So now let us discuss the cases. So there are totally there are, we are going to discuss four cases here. Uh, case 1 firstly uh, let us take x is equal to constant. That constant may be equal to a, say a. And that a should be a positive quantity. And what is this a is equal to, x is equal to a represents, x is equal to a represents the straight line which is parallel to y axis. So, a family of straight lines which are parallel to y axis is represented as x is equal to a. So, this x is equal to a must be substituted in your equation 1 and 2. So, substitute x is equal to a in equation 1 and 2. So, we get uh, u is equal to a square minus y square and v is equal to 2ay. v is equal to 2ay. So, fr from the here we get uh, v, y is equal to, we need y. So, v is equal to, uh, sorry, uh, y is equal to v by 2a that is v by 2a. And now let us eliminate any one of the variables. Since we have substituted for x, uh, we have to eliminate y. So, how do we do it? So, consider here u is equal to a square minus y square and we have an expression for u. So, this uh, y can be substituted there. So, u is equal to a square minus y square is nothing but v by 2a the whole square. This can be written as take an LCM and cross multiply it. We get 4a square u is equal to 4a to the power of uh, 4 minus v square. So, which we are going to write it as v square is equal to 4a square into a square minus u. We are writing this because we have to get one of the standard form of a curve. So, if we keep it as it is, this is, this is not going to represent any standard form of a curve. That is why we are rewriting in this way. So, this v square is equal to minus 4a square into u minus a square. Call it as equation 3 and this represents a parabola. Hope you all know that it represents a parabola parabola family of parabolas for different values of a you will get different curves so uh, and uh, since the negative sign is there you can observe here in the previous slide because of the negative sign and there is a shift in the locus there is a shift in the locus so instead of uh, uh, if you have y square is equal to uh, if you have y square is equal to uh, minus 4a then the uh, your parabola will be some somewhere like this with the focus at this point so, since there is a shift in the uh, locus, there will be a shift in the point also. So, they are going to intersect the x-axis at these points. So, uh, we can conclude it. We can conclude it. The equation x is equal to a are the set of uh, family of straight lines which are parallel to y-axis are going to be mapped to a parabolas um, in the w plane. So, that is how the case 1 is concluded. Similarly, we have to discuss the case 2. The case 2 here is, the case 2 is, let us consider y is equal to b. So, over here b is a constant. What does this y is equal to b represents? And b must be a positive value. So, which represent a family of straight lines. So, y is equal to b represent a family of straight lines which are parallel to x-axis. So, this uh, straight lines parallel to x-axis in the z-plane should have been mapped on to some other curve on the w plane. We need to find out what they are. So, substitute y is equal to b in our equation 1 and 2 which we have already evaluated. So, we get uh, u is equal to v by 2b the whole square minus b square and which gives u is equal to v square by 4b square minus b square and u is equal to this and on simplifying we get v square is equal to 4b square plus u plus b square. So, observe uh, the here is a positive quantity and here there is a shift in the locus. Otherwise, it is a parabola equation. So, now the set of equations y is equal to b are the lines parallel to y axis have been mapped onto the parabolas in the w plane. So, there is a shift in the locus and uh, the parabolas are consequently are there because different values of b uh, we have drawn the parabolas here. That is about your case 2. 
So to conclude, uh, the transformation W is equal to Z square transforms straight line parallel to Y axis to the parabolas having negative U axis as a summit axis and the straight line parallel to X axis are going to be transferred as parabolas having the uh, positive U axis as its symmetric axis. So that is how we are going to discuss the conformal transformation of W is equal to Z square. Similarly, let us discuss the transformation W is equal to e to the power of Z. We need to do it. So here uh, W is equal to e power Z and dW by dZ is not equal to 0 at any point because uh, differentiation of which is same. So uh, the transformation which exists at all the points. So consider Z is equal to X plus IY and W is equal to U plus IV. Substitute it here. And as, it, as in the previous problem, we have to segregate the real and imaginary part. So consider u plus iv is equal to e power xy and e power iy is nothing but cos y plus i sin y. So we get e power x into cos y plus i into e power x sin y. So u here is uh, e power x cos y and v here is e power x sin y and call them as equation 1. So let us discuss this at uh, different points. So consider x is equal to a where a is a constant. And uh, what x is equal to a represents? It is It represents a uh, equation of a straight line parallel to y axis in the z plane. So substitute that in our equation 1. So we get u is equal to e power a cos y and v is equal to e power a sin y. So as it is, u and v doesn't represent any curves. So we have to bring, uh, we have to rewrite in such a way it represents some curves so that we can tell a uh, straight line in the z plane has been transformed to so and so curve in the w plane. So in order to do that, what we do is here, we are going to square and add u and v. So square and add u square plus v square is equal to e to the power of 2a cos square y e to the power of 2a sin square y. Take out e to the power of 2a as a common term cos square y plus sin square y and this is cos square plus, uh, plus sin square y is 1. So u square plus v square results in e to the power of 2a. So this e to the power of 2a can also be written as e to the power of a the whole square. So if we write like this, this represents u square plus v square is equal to e power a whole square represent a circle in the w plane. So as, as you can remember, x square plus y square is equal to a square represent a circle in z plane uh, that x and y has been replaced by u and v in the w plane. Therefore, u square plus v square is equal to, to uh, e to the power of a represent a circle in the w plane. So you can see. Uh, x is equal to a are the family of straight lines which are parallel to y axis have been transformed to a circle in the w plane with center at origin and radius is equal to e to the power of a. So similarly let us discuss case 2 and we are going to substitute for y now if y is equal to b where b is a constant. What is this y is equal to b represent? y is equal to b represent a straight line parallel to x axis in the z plane. So substitute that in our equation 1, we get u is equal to e power x cos b and v is equal to e power x sin b. So consider here u by v, e power x cos b by e power x sin b, which gives uh, e power x, e power x gets cancelled. So you get cot b and v is equal to u tan b, where tan b is a constant, what this represents. So uh, try to uh, recall here uh, y, x and y. So x and y are going to be replaced by u and v. So if we have y is equal to mx, where m is a constant, and here it is uh, v is equal to uh, tan b into v, uh, u. So this is similar to this. So if this represents a straight line, this also represents a straight line. Only thing is this is in z plane and this is in w plane. That is all the difference is. So we, this is how we need to uh, find out what exactly it represents. So v is equal to u uh, tan b represent a straight line. What straight line it is? So, uh, that straight line which passes through the origin. So therefore we can conclude uh, the family of straight line passing through the origin in the W plane that is what uh, V is equal to U into tan B represents. So, uh, so totally we can conclude uh, the lines Y is equal to B are the lines uh, parallel to X axis are going to be transformed to uh, the lines which are pa which passes through the origin in the W plane. So let us see on another case if X is equal to uh, 0. Uh, this represents an imaginary axis. So what does the x is equal to 0 represent? That is nothing but the y axis. So in a complex plane, y axis is also called as an imaginary axis. So the x is equal to 0 represent an imaginary axis in the z plane. And equation 1 gives us u is equal to cos y plus v is equal to sin y. Square and add, we get u square plus v square is equal to 1. So x is equal to 0 was our y axis. This is going to be transformed to 
u square plus v square is equal to 1 which represent a circle with unit radius 1 radius is equal to 1 and cent uh, center is at the origin. So similarly let us uh, discuss when y is 0 y is equal to 0 is nothing but the real axis that is nothing but our x axis in the z plane. So substitute y is equal to 0 in our equation 1 uh, we get u is equal to e power x cos 0 and v is equal to e power x sin 0. Sin 0 is 0 the entire term becomes 0 so only u is equal to e to the power of x. So what is this u is equal to e power x represents so that is nothing but uh, v, uh, v uh, and v is equal this is an exponential curve v is equal to 0 represents the real axis in the w plane. So uh, the uh, horizontal equation that is x is e y is equal to 0 here has going to be represented as v is equal to 0 in the w plane. So and to, to conclude uh, under the transformation e to the power of z the straight line parallel to y axis uh, is going to be transformed to a circle with center at the origin and radius is equal to e power a and the straight line parallel to x axis are going to be mapped onto the straight line which are passing through the origin in the w plane. So that is how we will conclude it. Let us see an another uh, transformation which is w is equal to z plus 1 by z. So uh, the procedure is same. So we have to find out where and all the transformation exists. Then we have to find out the real and imaginary part and then we have to proceed. So consider w is equal to z plus 1 by z. Uh, dw by dz differentiation of which is 1 minus 1, uh, 1 by z square. So dw by dz is 0 only at z is equal to plus or minus 1. Therefore, the transformation is not conformal at this particular point. At the remaining points, it is going to be conformal. So here, since because of this that in the denominator, if we consider the Cartesian form, the problem is going to be little complicated. As uh, if, if I take z is equal to x plus i y, we get w is equal to x plus i y uh, plus 1 divided by x plus i y. So to segregate the real and imaginary part, we have to do little bit of work. So in order to avoid the complexity, so we can uh, shift over from Cartesian form to polar form. So I'll consider z is equal to r e to the power of i theta in the polar form. So it will be easy for us to go uh, further. So consider z is equal to r e power i theta and w is equal to u plus i v. So substituting here, uh, we get u plus i v is equal to r e power i theta plus 1 by r into e power i theta. So in the denominator e to the power of i theta, if I take it to the numerator, it becomes minus e to the power of uh, e to the power of minus i theta. So what is e power i theta is e power i theta we know which is cos theta plus i sin theta plus i sin theta. So therefore this e power i theta is re uh, replaced as this and e power minus i theta is cos theta minus i sin theta. So now as it is, these real and imaginary parts are not going to, uh, going, going to give anything in particularly. So we have to modify still. So this u plus iv is equal to group the terms of cos theta and sin theta. So we get r plus 1 by r cos theta uh, from here to here and this term and this term. And uh, grouping the sin theta terms, we get r minus 1 by r. And so that we can segregate the real and imaginary part. Therefore u is equal to this and v is equal to this and call the equation as 1 and keep them. So in uh, uh, now uh, from these two equations we have to eliminate any one of the variable. So first let us eliminate theta. So in order to do that uh, square and add the equations uh, that is u and v in equation 1. So on squaring and adding we get u square uh, plus v square along with uh, cos square theta plus sin square theta we get re rearrange the terms. So cos square theta plus sin square theta gives us the value 1. So uh, u square by r plus 1 by r whole square and v square by r minus 1 by r whole square is equal to 1 represents what is this represent it represents an so it represents an ellipse it represents an ellipse it is not a circle it, it represents an ellipse it represents an ellipse uh, in the it represents an ellipse in the w plane because of the u and v. So substitute uh, if uh, r is equal to a, if you replace r is equal to a, u square by a plus 1 by a whole square plus v square uh, by a minus a, uh, 1 by a whole square which is equal to 1. So that represents represent an ellipse having the center at the origin in the w plane. So here this is not a circle, this is supposed to be an ellipse. So make a correction. So here this is an ellipse. 
So this is how the curve looks like. Similarly, let us eliminate R from the uh, real and imaginary part. So when we do so, u square by cos square theta minus v square by sin square theta is equal to add, uh, subtract the square and subtract the other side. So we get uh, which is equal to 4 R plus 1 by R uh, whole square minus R minus 1 by R whole square. Expand them by using A plus B whole square and A minus B whole square and simplify we get this. So now let us substitute theta is equal to B where B is a constant. So in order to when we substitute uh, theta is equal to b, we get u square by cos square b minus v square by sin square b which is equal to 4. What exactly this represents? This represents a hyperbola. So uh, it's represent an hyperbola having center at the origin in the w plane. So actually theta is equal to b represent a line which passes through the origin which has been converted to an hyperbola in the w plane. So to conclude uh, the transformation w is equal to z plus 1 by z transforms circle with the center at origin to an ellipse uh, and the radial line that is a line which passes through the origin to an hyperbola having a center at origin. So this is how we need to discuss the conformal transformation and all the three transformation which we have discussed here are equally important and for sure you will be getting one question in your examination. So that is it for today. Thank